five months ago i made a video breaking down all of the ways to farm as much energy as possible about a thousand plus per day if you take advantage of all the different ways to get energy however what i want to focus on now is how to spend the energy because i talk about this a lot with people i get questions a lot about it too where people say like i don't have enough energy i, I don't have enough energy to do the things that i want to do uh, i'm spending too much energy here or there so i wanted to basically rank the different ways in which you can spend energy in the game and give you my opinion on which ones are the best for uh, you to basically spend your energy because energy is you know one of the three most important resources in the game after you know crystals and gold um, and i feel like a lot of players are inefficient and are stuck in old ways of thinking, especially veterans. Um, so I wanted to give you guys some updated thought, my updated thoughts on this. Obviously, you're welcome to spend your energy on whatever you want, and the way you want to play the game is is good. Like the play the way ever you the way you want to play it. But if you feel like you're not getting the most out of your energy, then maybe this will be helpful for you. I think a lot of people, most people, um, at some point in their day, will come into the dimension mission and they'll rack they'll rack off a bunch of uh, you know clear tickets, and they'll they'll do this and they'll hit ten. And who knows maybe they'll hit they'll hit 10 once they'll hit 10 twice you know you're like you're at the you're at the black check table you're like hit me hit me hit me um but in my opinion nowadays this is where it stops one and done and the reason for this is basically that there are other ways to spend your energy that are so much more valuable even if you like even if you're trying to get the characters down here in the very last contribution chest i would honestly ask you are you sure because Negasonic sucks. Professor X is not even the second best tier four um, blast mutant uh, character. Abomination is only a support and Rachel is okay, but you need her artifact. So they're not even that good. And what you have to give up in terms of energy, you have to give up so much energy to get all the way down to the seventh contribution. Sure, there are other rewards here. And if you have the contribution reward upgrade, it may be a bit more worthwhile to you, but honestly, these support tokens are not as valuable as they used to be when this system first came out the support tokens were so good um but nowadays it's it's really not that good so in my opinion um and without talking about it in too much detail and sort of beating a dead horse i would just spend uh it's 120 energy i would or without boost points right um i would just spend the energy that it takes to do 10 runs so that you can get the first two contributions i think the first two contributions are good if you're really tight on energy you could honestly just go for the first contribution the first contribution is without a doubt in my mind one of the easiest and best rewards in the game just two million gold easy peasy is fantastic right but honestly this is the biggest piece of advice i can give and so that's why i wanted to put it at the beginning of the video you're probably spending too much energy in dimension missions these rewards are just not good anymore like oh a bunch of one star cards wow a bunch of like one star two star uru oh but alex i need those uru um for the combining event no, you don't. Combining one star Uru is going to just deplete your gold and it's not going to give you any six star Uru because there's a, there's a failure chance at every step, right? From one to two to three to four to five to six, there's a failure chance and then it just gets worse. So you did your 10 dimension missions. Okay, now what? Story mode. I really can't say this enough. You should be farming story mode every single day. You should absolutely farm dimensional clash. You should absolutely farm the all war and you should absolutely farm the future ends here. The only one that you should consider skipping is the true shield. And honestly, for most players, you shouldn't skip the true shield because you need the ISO. You, I know you need the ISO because you need to build up characters ISO 8 sets. If you're a like seven, eight year veteran um, and you have a full roster and you have ISO for all of them, then maybe you can skip this. But look, even if you, even if you don't need the ISO, you can get tier three materials. So there's almost no reason to skip this. But m more generally, I see people saying that they don't play story mode. And I even see new players saying they don't play story mode. And I really don't understand this. Even if you don't get the fragments, you still get other rewards, right? You still get tier three materials. Cause you can see here, the reward is either a fragment or you get tier three materials. So you're not, you're not trading your energy for nothing. Even if you don't have Strife, you don't have Icarus, you don't have uh, uh, you know Black Dwarf, that's fine. That's fine. Just run through it with whatever team you have. Oh, Alex, I don't have three tier threes. Okay, get yourself three tier threes. Get one of them that can go through the stage quickly, like, you know, level 72 Thor or even like bootleg level 70 Human Torch from a long time ago, whatever, because this content hasn't gotten any more difficult, right? It hasn't gotten any more difficult. You have cards, you have swords now, you have your team up collection. You have so many ways to just bully through this and just 
grind it out it's only 31 stages in total and like i said even if you're not getting the fragments you're getting the tier 3 materials and people forget this you're not just getting the tier 3 materials you're getting bios you're getting norn stones you're getting uh enhancement kits these are all valuable and you also have a chance to get uh, an artifact i'm telling you right now it's it's much more worth it to do story mode even if you don't have a big roster even if you're a new player please farm story mode because you always have a chance to get fragment drops there's always at least a 25 percent chance and then on top of that you get a bunch of other rewards that are so those two i think are are really big sources of like spend less energy here and spend more energy here now obviously some people they're like okay i don't have a lot of time right to spend farming this content i can't be on my phone for hours i can understand that so the next thing it's a little bit more important but i would obviously run through and auto clear as many of the epic quest uh you know two and three uh limit quests that you have so in epic quests there are you know there are different stages and the different stages have a quest limit of either two or three or ten so you know you go over here to this one and you have the shaper of sorry you have the um you have the playing hero this is a zero out of two right yeah so i've already done this one twice but it's it's a two and then if you go over here to golden god so you have uh twisted, twisted reality and god of war these are three out of three so I daily, I exhaust all of the two limit and three limit quests um, and I clear ticket them and I clear to the clear ticket them because they give a lot of energy. I mean, sorry, because they give a lot of uh, gold. They also give other good resources, but mainly it's for the gold. So I would recommend doing this. However, I would recommend skipping all of the 10, the one that gives you, you know, bios, the, t the 10, 10 per day reward stages. I would not do these unless you're specifically farming to unlock a character or you're specifically farming their bios in order to get their their uniform or whatever but even then even then i would say do you need to do that or can you just get their bios from shadowland because if you can get their bios from shadowland then you can save the energy to towards something more valuable but you know i'll be honest with you i do you can see i've already cleared a bunch of them like uh, unfortunate fate heroes united reunited tr uh, true evolution golden gods we just did doomsday beginning of the chaos I farm this shit every single day because it gives valuable drops, like especially the Phoenix feathers and stuff. And then it also gives um, really good gold, right? Really good gold. Um, and then from there, in my opinion, the best place to spend energy, and this is this is personally my favorite place to spend energy, but I understand that this one is a bit more of a high bar uh, to, for players to complete, is Dimension Rifts. Now, I don't want to spend too long talking about Dimension Rifts, but essentially this is more difficult content for sure it's way more difficult than story mode it's way more difficult than just like auto clearing epic quest content because you need to construct a team around farming and the best team in my opinion which i already made a breakdown video for but the best team for farming is this team right here uh, and you have to take you know take care to properly set the dealer because if you just have the dealer set as the leadership then you're going to screw up the farming because nick fury is super slow or you're going to have to switch every single round over to whoever your dealer is now, in my opinion, Rogue is the best dealer, but you can alter this team. You know, you could swap in your your Thor. You could swap in a, a Magneto or a Jean Grey, right? There are a few different options for this. Um, you can experiment with your own options as well. Um, when you're just starting out as a newer player, just try your best team, right? Just try, and what I mean by your best team is like your best leadership, your best support, and then your best damage dealer, and then set the dealer to your damage dealer so that it's not uh, your leadership who is going out there, you know, your your Shuri or your Wave or whatever isn't the one going out there doing damage. But I would just set up whatever your best team is and then farm Dimension Rifts. And the, the sort of the strategy for Dimension Rifts as you get better at it, because at first you're not going to be very good, so you're mostly going to be farming low-level Rifts, like normal and rare and whatever. Just to reiterate quickly, the, the, the rarity of the Rift does not indicate difficulty. The difficulty is the same ac across all the rifts. It's always the same. You set the difficulty when you go into the rift. Like if you if you enter here, I can then set the difficulty. So you know, start it off on difficulty one, obviously, and then you can you can you know raise it from there if it's easy. And then once you start failing stages, or if it takes too long, you want to you know lower it until you can farm it quickly. But the goal is right as soon as you can. If even if you're a new player, as soon as you can, whatever it takes you, like three months, six months put together a farming team that's fast that can do difficulty six consistently and that's when you want to start farming two to three mythic rifts per day 
Now, this is a lot more involved because it's going to require you to have friends. I know. And it's going to require you to have an active alliance. I know. These are difficult things. There's external factors. You know, you're going to have to communicate with people in the in-game chat or on Discord or on whatever Facebook groups, whatever the case may be. Um, but basically, you organize it with them. They open a rift for you. You you farm their rift for 30 minutes. You spend like anywhere from 200 to 350 energy. I know it's a lot of energy, but it's worth it. Um, and then you open one for them and you can farm your own rift, right? And you can and you can do that two to three times a day, right? Because you can do you can join two right there and then you can open one of your own. And you always want to make sure that when you're opening one of your own, you want to open only mythic or normal. I think it's a really good idea. I mean, you can obviously spend energy however you want, but I think the um, the proof is in the pudding, I would say. And, you know, someone can show me their uh, their dimension debris or their Nornstones because they farmed, you know, 100 dimension missions a day. And they're really proud of that. And then I would say to that, you know, that's cool. But look at all these artifacts that I have because I farm dimension rifts instead of dimension missions. Um, and uh, I, I then gambled the Celestial Essence that I got after doing the, the dismantling, right? I dismantled the stuff and then I gambled it and I got lucky. Right. And I know, you, you know, you can gamble and not get lucky for sure. And I have plenty of videos where that happens, but eventually you're going to get lucky. You're not going to be unlucky forever. And worst case scenario, right? You take that essence if you're if you're tired of gambling and you use it to rank up an artifact to get it to plus 20. So it gives you a greater effect on the character that you're using it on. If, it's, if you got your favorite character or whatever, or if you're fighting for top rank, you're going to need to do that anyways. So it's a lot more flexibility, in my opinion, than just whatever, you know, pity rewards they give you over here in dimension missions um, and that basically that basically does it obviously there's a few other ways that you could spend energy in the game um, for example the giant boss raid but again I don't think it's worth farming beyond the soul of the foul team that you get daily I see some people saying they're going to do 10 15 GBR runs a day trying to farm CTPs listen just to give you an example I have never ever not even one time gotten a CTP from GBR I have farmed the hell out of GBR, especially when it, Dormammu first came out. I was farming this shit for hours a day with boost points. I was buying thousands of crystals worth of boost points, um, and I didn't get a single drop. So it's, in my opinion, it's not worth it. But yeah, hopefully this is a you know a bit of a, an insightful thing for those of you that have just been spending your energy by the sort of the old method. Um, and hopefully I've inspired some of you to maybe take a second look at your Dimension Rift team or take a look, second look at story mode farm, fragment farming uh, because I, I think it's super underrated still. Uh, and I also think, just to, to clarify here, I don't think... Dispatch dispatch farming is okay. Uh, this, is, this is the way I'll put it. Dispatch farming is okay. And when you hit it big, it's great because you get a P card or you get an Oda's Blessing or you get a CTP. That's cool. But for the other 150 runs, 200 runs, you don't get anything or you get mostly kind of whatever four star cards, five star ISO, just kind of whatever stuff. I much prefer Dimension Rifts and Story Mode because the, the rewards there are much higher and it's they're much more consistent. So I don't like the gamble of Dispatch. I know there are certain things you need to do to farm Dispatch, like, you know, when there are, there are events to farm like chocolate and stuff or some of the uh, shield uh, archive stuff. You do need to farm like I, I still need personally need to farm uh, 12 more of these Hydra flags from Sector 12, I believe. Yeah, uh, of Dispatch. This kind of stuff, yeah, but day-to-day uh, -day farming, do I farm Dispatch at all? No, not at all. I would much rather spend the energy on Rifts and the other stuff that I outlined. So yeah, let me have in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button. It helps out the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.